Hi all, welcome to Cryptoffy, a home for your crypto news and updates. For this video, we will dive into the Flare's native oracle, known as FTSO, or FTSO. The FTSO functions through the data providers who sit as a sort of middleware in the stack and work on retrieving price pair data from exchanges or other external sources. From this, the data providers offer the price pair estimations on-chain to the Flare network, and this in turn is given to the users. How the network delegation comes to play here is, the providers that provide useful pair information are rewarded based on accuracy. The rewards are then also shared between the providers and us, the users. The key features are the fact that the FTSOs, meaning the providers that sit independent of Flare, so there's no management or ownership from Flare, making the FTSO decentralized. With innovation and advancements in technology, we can see the improvements in the time it takes to update the FTSO data, which currently sits at around a three minute interval. In terms of extending this out to other areas, I'm sure we can see not just this data being addressed, but also larger data sets, different use cases, and I'm sure the Flare network can grow in this way. Data is money, and this, if used correctly, can open doors to having accurate data at the user's disposal. I'm sure the use cases will ripple out into the Flare network when business and consumer needs are well justified. As users, our support is everything, and playing a hand in this delegation will in turn compound your rewards and, fingers crossed, open doors for both the Flare networks and its long-term supporters. So what's important for the data providers? The data providers must showcase their talented algorithms and offer trust to the community and in turn, both will be rewarded. To see reliable, to see how reliable the providers are, take a look at the vote power they have. The way the FTSO system works is by offering a weight on their contribution based off the number of tokens they hold and have delegated. From this, if their submission of data is accurate, then more rewards. And more rewards means more vote power. Just remember, you choose the data provider, all providers, as you can choose more than one with a maximum of two, and you choose how much vote power you would like to give. This gives the user the control for this sort of delegation. For anyone looking to become a data provider, just note that the importance of the timing is everything. And if you make mistakes on this, you will in turn lose your ability to have a stake in rewards. As this gains trust, and the way you work as a FTSO provider will in turn allow you to compound your own rewards and also gain traction in the network. So what exactly determines how much rewards you can earn? Well, there's several factors from the reward rate from data providers, the fee, which is the fee the provider takes for delegating to them, the delegated balance and of course vote power and thus already delegated to the provider. So one key aspect to take note of is the cap that is set at 2.5% which means anything above the 2.5% vote power cap is ignored. This is in place to provide a fair battleground for the providers. So to paint the picture somewhat like a poker game and the data providers commit their hash first which basically says they're happy to play and at the end they reveal their cards which is essentially their results which is their price the reason for this is to allow the providers to submit data without knowing each other's this in turn allows a fair and validated system the FTSO system then takes the median result based off the provider's voting power, and for each price epoch where the data is submitted is close enough to that median value, 
the providers and those users who use them to delegate are rewarded. In comparison to Songbird, which repeats every seven days, the Flare Reward Epoch is every three and a half days. This makes sense why the auto-claim functionality was in place quite early in comparison to the Songbird network. Overall, I think this is just a fraction of what's in store for the Flare network, and this is just a toe dipped into the pool of innovation. We can see clearly the importance of real-time data and this how this will play a pivotal role in the future of blockchain. Data already plays a huge role in our current lives and businesses especially, but the handling of this data is not always secure and doesn't always come from the most reputable places. The way the footsole works allows trustworthiness and security to be highlighted. I'm sure when others areas are able to see this, they will expand into areas of handling data sets with other use cases and this could grow the Flare network to new heights. I'm not going to recommend any data providers but there are reputable providers in this space and incentives are on their way for their users. NFTs are always a nice touch for choosing a provider over another but without a use case for the NFT the value in these NFTs are just more for showcasing and just help with branding the footsop providers so I don't see the users getting any benefit from that unless there is a well justified opportunity with a use case so I'm not too interested in what the providers can provide me unless there is a benefit from the recent articles and updates that we have from the Flare network and also the pro footsop providers we have clearly seen that the deployment and decisions made by the Flare network are somewhat being questioned, which some of it I do agree with and some of it not. I'm not going into too much detail about what I do and don't agree with, but again, I'm sure this, there's a lot of lessons to take for the Flare network and the team involved and also the providers. To be successful in this space, there are a lot of companies that have taken the right directions and there's a lot of reputable people in the space. So I hope that the providers and the Flare network look towards those type of people to be able to grow this network and continue to innovate. I just want to say a big thank you to the Flare network team and the providers for the documentation and also a great medium article which helped me create this video so thanks all and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content